Hi, this is Roger in Finland and today we're going to take a look at the long-term view on the DJI Osmo Pocket. So for the impatient ones, this is a great gimbal and camera combination with a very, very nice price, especially now that the Pocket 2 has been released. That gives, I would say, surprisingly good image quality for the size and the price. And it shoots up to 4K60, which is cool. And now let's go into some more details. I released a video just a few days ago comparing the original DJI Osmo Pocket with the new uh, Pocket 2. Specs wise and giving my opinion as an owner of the older version, I don't have a new one and I don't think I'm going to buy it. And I went over some of the specs, but somebody was asking, could you show a little bit footage from the outside? And then maybe I thought that I could talk a little bit more from a long term review. My first reaction was, it's November in Finland, so outside it's basically pitch black until half past nine in the morning and then it's pitch black again at four in the afternoon and mostly it's actually very cloudy in the middle of the day so it's not gonna be great but last Saturday we saw the sun we saw the sun in Finland in November I had to go out and I thought that if I'm gonna go out why not take this with me and take some clips so then actually I could make this video Let's go through the boring specs quickly. It has a 1 over 2.3 inches sensor. It shoots up to 4K 60p. It shoots up to 120p in full HD. The battery, it says that it lasts a little bit over two hours. The lens is an equivalent in field of view to a 28 millimeter and it's an F2 lens. It does track, which is really cool. And it comes with this case. And I think that's about it when it comes to specs. Oh yeah, and it accepts micro SD cards. Then when it comes to picture profiles, it does have the normal profile, which is quite contrasty and saturated, but I think it looks good. And then it has have a, like a pro mode. I think it's like kind of cine D profile, which is a little bit flatter to give you a little bit more room for grading, but it's still an 8-bit codec for, I believe that it's still an 8-bit 420 codec and gives you a little bit flatter image. So maybe you get a little bit extra dynamic range, but don't expect that you're going to have a lot of room for color grading. Not that it would be to be expected in a device of this size, this price, and a sensor of this size anyway. Then when it comes to the modes, it has the first person view, it has the follow, which is basically a softer first person view, a bit more later on that, and then a fixed tilt, and then it has also a selfie mode. But we're gonna take a look at those a bit more detail in later. So how to use this thing in general. So pick it out of the case, uh, one thing which is a little bit annoying in my opinion, like all the DJI devices, the first time that you turn them on, you need to activate them, you need to use your phone, and I just don't like that so much, but it's a process that you have to go through. In this case, you have this little dongle that you put here, and then you can connect your phone next to it, which by the way would give you the extra screen that you might want since the screen in the pocket itself, it's quite small, but I always find it a little bit flimsy and I'm worried that either the phone, the pocket, or this thing is gonna break down and I don't wanna buy more accessories for it. Then to turn it on, I just, let me put this back. Hold this button, it turns on, the gimbal calibrates itself and it's ready to go. Then if I click one click, it changes from photo to video mode, two clicks recenters the camera and three clicks, it goes into selfie mode because some people might want to use this as a vlogging camera. I have used it. I'm going to try to find some footage of older vlogs, which is me walking in the middle of the forest because I'm afraid to talk when there's other people around, but that's not a problem. And I think that the field of view of this camera, it's a little bit too tight for that purpose. And that's why I would recommend if you want to use this type of device for vlogging to go for the newer one that has a lot wider field of view. But that's not my main use because I don't really do that. So I actually like the tighter field of view. Then there's the record button and that's about it. The screen is a touch screen and with the usual swipe up, down, left and right. So swapping from the left, you're going to get the replay. Swapping from the bottom, you get into some uh, basic shooting options. Like you can choose the tilt pan, uh, first person view or these kind of things. Recenter the camera also. And then if you swipe to the from the right, then you can change the, the video modes and the slow motion. You can um, choose the frame rates and all this kind of stuff. All in all, a very easy and pleasant device to use. But then how about using it? So I'm going to be showing mostly clips from the last Saturday because that's the freshest thing I have in mind. Then I'm going to try to find some other clips that I shot earlier with this device and let's see how does this long-term review turn out. 
With the first person view, it basically follows you and follows the camera movements very quickly. Follow, it does the same thing, but it follows them a little bit slowly. This means that any movement, the gimbal will follow you afterwards. With the tilt fixed, it means that however you move the gimbal, the camera and the horizon try to stay in that level. Because it's a very small and very light device, unless you really know how to walk like a ninja, which I don't, it's gonna pick up or then say, the steps that you make while walking are going to be visible in the footage. But that's something that, again, walking more carefully, you would have probably a better result in the end. Or if you would have a massive device that you're holding with two hands, and then basically the movement of the device would be helpful to compensate for the walking itself. But this is a different kind of thing. And in the FPV mode, if you set the camera pointing upwards, or now that I put it horizontal, then it's pointing forwards, you can fake if you would be good at it, which I'm not, all that infinite rotation thingy. Because if you rotate it like this, it follows and you will have that effect. I tried to do that the other day when I was out in the beach. I obviously failed miserably, <laughs> but if you would be good at doing this rotation, you can fake it till you make it. As mentioned earlier, I use this for vlogging, which not with much success because of my lack of vlogging skills to start from. I've been using it to make a one short scene within a short field that actually blended very nicely. We're just riding within a car and that's something that I could just pull out of my pocket and get that particular shot. And then I've been using this quite a lot of running around after my kids, which is footage that I'm not going to show here, but it's been really fun for then sharing those the material and those videos with my family. So this is a really little fun device that it gives you really good image quality for what it is, how much it costs what it does and the size of it. And I mentioned in the earlier video, at least for me, I'm not gonna be upgrading to the new one. Complaints I have about this is the need for upgrading through accessories. You saw me before struggling to change the tilt of the gimbal by pushing here in the screen. There is an accessory with a wheel that you can do that a lot more easily. But again, that's something that you need to pay extra for. Then if you want the Wi-Fi connection to the phone to do like whatever, even downloading the, the files from here to there, like you can do immediately with the Osmo Pocket, for instance, uh, the Osmo Action. Then you need the special base that actually gives you an also a better way of putting the device on a table, but that costs also some more money. And then if you want to mount this on a tripod, you also need some accessory. Why would you like to mount it on a tripod? Because this tracks you, and that's cool. And in many cases, people will want to put that on the floor or in here. And if I'm moving around this room, well, it's not much room here, but imagine that I'm in a room that you could move around, then this thing would be following me. And you would want to put it static with the risk of falling, which now I wouldn't trust it with for anything at all. There is a pack price for all of these different accessories, which is 109 euros, which is the same price than when this was released two years ago, which kind of sucks to be honest. And it would have been nice that they would have had a, like this creator pack like they're doing with the pocket too, because that I think would have added the value immediately. Now I'm missing the, the, those accessories. I did get a base for it so I can mount it on a tripod and it relocates the USB-C at the bottom. But it would have been nice that these things don't add basically 25 or 30% on top of the price of the device itself. These are my complaints. I haven't need those accessories so much that I went out and bought them but time to time, when I take this for usage, I still miss them. All in all, I think that this is a device that will stay with me for quite a while. It's really fun. I still have use for it. And for the price that it's coming nowadays, if your main purpose is not vlogging, if you're fine with 4K60, and if you're okay with the field of view of equivalent of 28, I think this gives still today a lot of value for the money. And I hope you liked the video. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of the sun in November in Finland. That's rare, I promise you. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And we're going to see you soon for some more content.